Pleasant. Temperature's good. A few flies. Had a bit of an interesting moment on the road on the way in here. Pothole sort of caught me unawares and had a bit of a <clears throat> bit of an interesting time at 90 something kilometres an hour on the big lump of gravel in the middle of the road. But anyway, still upright. Thank you, Honda. You're a good girl. And uh, yeah, got my house set up. About to head over to the pub and have a refreshing tonic water. Oh, the excitement. We're about to head up the road to Oralula, up 320 kilometres of dirt, which apparently is, depends who you talk to. Some people say it's pretty good, some people say it's pretty terrible, but after my little moment yesterday, I'm not 100% G'd up on the idea, but anyway, I've got to get there, so if you're a vegetarian, then I apologise. Pete's a vegetarian. He's horrified at this. But anyway, I'm sure they'll be very tasty in a few months' time. We've made it. Well, we've made it this far. We're 50 k's down the road. We've made it to the Northern Territory border. Big starter motor's playing up, so he's not turning it off. And yeah, a bit of a leaky a leak there, but that seems to have stopped. So that's good. Now we've got a bit loose in the dirt. The dirt yesterday. bikes across this one. It's not that deep but there's lots of really big rocks hiding in the bottom and neither Pete nor I particularly felt like tipping the bikes over in a creek this late in the day. We're already five hours in and we've still probably got a couple of hours to go on the Hell's Gate to Borrelula Road which is a complete bastard. Probably the worst road I've ever been on on the bike. Well, not probably, 100% the worst. It's shit house. We've only got about 50 k's to go, but everyone tells us the last 50 to 60 k's is the worst. And if it's worse than what we've been on, then 
fuck me, I don't know where we're at. But anyway, I'll see you, see you when we get there. <laughs> well, that was a fucking hoot. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. You've never had so much fun. I think I'm broken. <laughs> My bike is. Yeah. That was just no fun. There's not one bit of it that was fun. No. Was Arriving. The count now. The last bit of a couple of k's of bitumen was all right. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> all right, we're gonna go. The road from Hell's Gate to Borolula. I'm trying to think how best to describe it. It's just seven hours of torture basically. So maybe in a car it's not too bad, but on the bike, well, this bike, which is not really designed for that kind of stuff, it's just been seven hours of fucking torture. But after about six attempts of crashing, two spearing off the roads, three creek crossings, one where we had to walk it across, um, I've made it without actually tipping it over. And I've shouted myself with a bit of help from Pete because he felt guilty, I think, because he wanted to go on that road. The deluxe donger. So you'll have to forgive me. I'm going to go and sluice off the filth and um, go and get something to eat and drink. Time to rebuild all the damage from yesterday. And also I'll tell you a little story about the guys we ran into at Hell's Gate. Phil and Gary. Phil decided to snap his key off in the seat lock, checking the air filter. Unfortunately, he had two bits of key, a long bit and a short bit. So he thought after a lot of thinking, the best way forward would be to Brand new KTM 890. The best way would be to stick <coughs> the remains of the keys in the lock, the ignition, and then follow it up with the fob part with all the electronics in it. And we'll turn it and start the bike and continue on his merry way. Unfortunately, that didn't work. So he's been stranded there for I think three days when we got there. And he's still there now. They work. I'm going to ride through the Simpson. Well, that didn't happen. So, currently, his daughter's driving up from Harvey Bay ish to rescue him and put his stranded KTM. These bolts are fucked. Put his stranded KTM on a trailer, on a ute, take it back to get a new ignition barrel. No doubt, an expensive process. All the temp proof bolts and everything else involved. Well, let's get that back on. So, and of course that leaves Gary with the problem of what to do with the rest of his holiday. In any case, a couple of legends, so we had an entertaining evening swapping stories with them. Before we headed out onto Australia's worst road, as I'm now dubbing it. My mirrors decided that they didn't really want to be on the bike anymore. They were turning all sorts of crazy circles. Which made it hard to see the cars sneaking up behind me in the dust. But towards the end of it I didn't care. I was kind of hoping one of them ran me over and ended it.
There we go, everything's back together, mirrors back on, screen back on, Navi back bolted on. I even closed the screen. There you go. Couldn't get any local. Pete has had to quickly pull the BMW to bits again. What do you it's, mean again? Because it's not starting. It starts once, then it runs all day, but it won't start second time in the morning. So we think it's a relay. So a little jigger there, but of course it's a gee whizzy European thing because you know. So Germans are special ones. Even though it's a Bosch relay is the standard and that's German. Uh, also, uh, European layout, if you want to be exact. European layout, whatever the fuck that is. European five pin changeover. Yes, so there you go. So it's, if you understand that, there's my sausage roll, I'm going to eat that in a sec. Sit rep update. Bike's back together. Pete's. I wouldn't go so far as to say he's happy, but at least he knows what's wrong with it. It turns out it looks like some dodgy starter motor. It's the correct term is open circuit. Open circuit on the, what do you say? Motor of the on motor. the motor of the Probably starter Probably a faulty segment. Probably a faulty segment. So if you've got auto lecky out there, that'll mean something to you. So what we've done, against all advice that Pete's been handing out for the last 40 years, as an auto lecky is, we've left the cover off so we can get in and whack it with a stick. I didn't whack it. A little Sorry, tap. Sorry, gently caress it. A little tap. A little love tap. And that, this with that is what we're leaving out. We've got the cover which we'll strap onto the bike and take, take with. And uh, yeah, sitting down in the ass, isn't he? to Perth. So on a scale of 1 to 10, we were just discussing the madness scale of uh, that, yeah. He's keen, I don't think he's mad, but yeah, he came across the Hell's Gate Road, same as us, on this thing, three days. So take my hat off to him. <laughs> Daily Orders Campground. Very busy. 
pub was very busy last night. State of origin was on, so there was many people. Cows in the bar and goats wandering around and children and dogs and tourists. Not what you call a quiet spot. In fact, probably the opposite of a quiet spot. But on the bright side, today we're heading somewhere <coughs> even busier, Kakadu. This is the Daily Waters World War II aircraft hangar. Yeah, but it's an interesting old shed. Quite, um, quite big. I don't know what they had in here. What kind of planes? War planes. Anyway, my riding companion Pete has unfortunately decided to pull the pin at this juncture and head back home. He is not coping with the physical uh, just not coping with the physical hardships of being on the bike all day every day and these things are supposed to be fun not a torment so he is heading home today once he gets his starter motor working which is still playing up wouldn't work again this morning so I'll call him tonight see how he's traveling but onward to Kakadu today.
do. $60 a night for a small, unpowered patch of grass. Exceptional value for money. And it's 32 degrees as well, so it's humid. It's amazing, it gets, you turn off into the park, it's 29 degrees, by the time you arrive here, the humidity's gone up, doubled, and the temperature's gone up three degrees. It's very strange, you haven't really gone north appreciably, but it does get a lot hotter. So anyway, tomorrow we're gonna have a look at some things, Stay here for two nights, have a bit of a break tomorrow. Rode up from Daly Waters today, pretty boring. Well, very boring really. Ride into the park's pretty good actually, it's pretty windy. It'd actually be quite good fun on a sport bike because there's no police out here, you can go as fast as you like. Not that I would ever recommend doing that, of course, that would be silly. It's um, it's a beautiful morning. It's um, it's not particularly cool. It's warm, in fact, but the mosquitoes are absolutely brutal. Didn't bother to bring the bug spray because I'm an idiot, so I'm paying the price for that at the moment. And of course, the sunrise has not really materialised into anything interesting. The massive grey clouds. The clouds too low, so we're not getting any. Uh, any colour or anything of any real interest. But on the bright side, I've got tons of mosquito bites, so there is that plus. Talk about overpriced and underserviced, this Kuinda Lodge, my God. No staff, $60 a night for a six metre square bit of dirt to put your tent on, surrounded by hundreds of school kids and caravans and bloody, you name it, it's just unbelievable. It takes 15 minutes to buy a drink in the shop. Just, yeah, can't recommend. One star. Look at the size of this thing. It's kind of hard to tell actually. I'll get up close to it and get some idea of just how big it is. I've got no idea what it is. It's just a great lump of dirt on the side of the road. So I assume they're built by kangaroos or wallabies or goannas or something. So whatever they are, they're bloody impressive.
Indian Territory. Really nice camping ground. Beautiful grassy spot. Big trees. Um, cool this morning. Rained all last night. Only light rain, but rain nonetheless. So today, head into WA to Lake Argyle, I think. Kununurra, Lake Argyle, somewhere around there. Not a long day today, only a few hundred k's. Timber Creek, such as it is. WA has arrived, finally. So now I've got to unpack the bike by the looks of it and um, divulge all my fruit and veg, of which I have none. I've got a quarter of a packet of uh, corn chips, a muesli bar and two tins of tin of spaghetti and a tin of stag chilli, so I don't think they're going to be that interested in it, but anyway, here it is. So we'll see you on the other side. Typical. <laughs> <laughs> 